You do your thing, Blair. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the show. A man with many voices and many names. James Arnold Taylor! How are we doing? things happening throughout the entire weekend on this stage. We're going to be talking to Mark Hamill. Tomorrow. I don't know if you've heard of him, Mark Hamill. Yeah. <laughs> and Carrie Fisher as well. We've got Seth Green and his folks from Robot Chicken coming out tomorrow yeah. on the next day as well. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing a little show uh, called Talking to Myself here on the main stage at 6.30 on Saturday night. And I am hoping that you come and join me. Now, I am a voice actor. For those of you that don't know, because obviously you're here to see the Emperor, right? As you should be. You are in the right place. So, people might say, well, what is a voice actor? What exactly do you do? You're not on camera. You don't do the makeup and all that. Have I heard you in anything? Well, you know, if you ever turn on the TV, you might hear Jedi's Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm not sure. Double for whoa, wait a second, My, Michael J. Fox is doing a little and Milo Thatch. I've been Leonardo the Ninja Turtle. You have a name to do Frank Flintstone? And Chubby Test! Awesome! I'm also the Strawberry Mini Wheat. I will obviously tell you what's coming up next on Animation Domination on Fox and Disney so random! I've even been the guy that would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Now, in video games, I'm Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. Titus from Final Fantasy X, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Greg Scott, Young Doc Brown, Captain Jack Sparrow, <laughs> Willy Wonka, Prince Charming, <laughs> Gigi the Gingerbread Man, Powers of Malice, and Omen Transformers. Now sometimes when celebrities aren't available to do their own voice, I come in and fill in like Dan Spade, Whoa, Shia LaBeouf, Christian Bale's Batman, Nicholas Cage, Justin Timberlake, Oh, Jay Marshall. Oh, hey, my boy, you're talking about. I was with the child. Yeah. It's crazy. I've even been Christopher Walken. Oh, you can't. It's a real thing. Okay, well, you can do it. It's a real thing. It's directed. Love for love and for life safely. Offer expired November 30th. See store for details. That was not a good action. Your soul's heavenly son is a required member of the IC. Don't miss it. So see, there's more to voiceover than you thought, and that's some of the little stuff that you can catch uh, talking to myself, 6.30 on Saturday night. Yes, I'm giving a shameless plug for myself here, because I am thrilled now. I think we are ready for the Emperor. What do you think, yes? Or is it Palpatine? We have a special, a special guest for Palpatine as well, yeah. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We are the folks lucky enough to be here. This is an exclusive to Star Wars Celebration. So before we bring about, uh, first off, I want to hear a little more noise from you here, yes? Are you excited? Yes? <laughs> because you are in for a treat. Watch these screens.
Ouais. 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 Sometimes we get just some water. Thank you, sir, for being here. This is just this is such an honor to have you here in celebration. Nice to be here. Yeah, and you you arrived uh, today or uh, yesterday? Yesterday evening. Wow. And and I understand you went down and did some uh, signing and such. Yeah, and surprise I saw me. lots of you, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I was happy to sign some things and uh, get some pictures with you. Wow. Is it uh, everything you imagined? Is there like a secret fanboy in you about all of this stuff to kind of see it? Or... Well, I, I, this is the first uh, celebration uh, that, I've, that I've attended. I've usually been working in the theatre, so I didn't have the opportunity. Um, so it's a big, new, exciting experience for me. Um, and uh, I'm a little jet-lagged. Um, the response <laughs> you gave me this evening has restored, restored me to a kind of sanity. So it's good. <laughs> and the fans of Star Wars have that effect on us. They okay. are very, very good to us. And so now if I said two words to you, I've heard I've heard you talk about this before. If I said great nose, yeah. would that mean anything to you? Yes, that takes me back to the very first time I met George Lucas. Um, I was in a play at the Royal Court Theatre in London, which is a very small theatre, and I was playing an American, a very well-known American, or rather a version of him. Howard Hughes, uh, in Sam Shepard's place, the Duke's, it's called Henry Hackmore in that. And uh, I was very old in that. I had the long hair and the fingernails, and I was surrounded by two charming handmaidens, and a guy who connected me to my life support systems. And the casting director of Star Wars, Mary Selwyn, who was a remarkable woman, sadly no longer with us, uh, saw that show. And I got a call, my agent got a call, one lunchtime, and say, George Lucas would like to meet Ian. That was all. And uh, a car will arrive shortly. Well, I was looking outside the window, and the car had already arrived. <laughs> <laughs> He's all in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, so I got in. And uh, when I went out of the studios, it was lunchtime, and George and Richard Marquand, the director, as you all know, of Return of Jedi, were having their lunch, um, and they just started shooting. So I thought, well, they must have cast everything by now, this is very strange. Anyway, we didn't talk about the picture, we didn't talk about the movies, I can't remember what we talked about. Lunch, probably. <laughs> and uh, it was a nice interview, and I thought, well, it'd be nice, nice to have met George and Richard, and uh, I'll just go home now. And as I was going out of the door, George said, hey, great nose. <laughs> Which is important. I know, I know, which is very nice. Yeah. But I, I, later on I realized what you meant. But I thought, well, uh, my actor's instinct told me that maybe something was happening. And when I got back home, the phone was ringing again. And it was my agent who said, you've got the part. Huh. I said, well, that's great. What's the part? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh no, actor's questions. Anyway. He looked up his notes and said he's called the Emperor of the Universe. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I guess we'll be doing it. <laughs> and that's how it all started. Wow, that is awesome. And of course, the notes, because then, you know... That's yeah, well, the notes was the only thing that wasn't the prosthetic, really. <laughs> and I'll obviously they could save on the budget. I think that was, it was, as, it was as simple as that. So as nice as it. And then the voice. Now, originally, in Empire, Clive Revel had done the voice. So, you were asked to kind of match his tone and sound at first, or was it...? Yeah, I was a real novice to the whole Star Wars world, really. I'd seen the first movie, you hope, as we now know it, uh, but I hadn't seen Shameful, uh, The Empire Strikes Back. But they gave me a tape, and I saw it, and I said, well, who was that? And they said, that people didn't really have an exact explanation, but they said, oh, well, it's this actress in a sort of monkey mask with Clive Rebel's voice. And uh, Richard Markman said, if you can get sort of close to Clive's voice, maybe George will let, let you keep yours. I, I have no idea it's going to be taken away from me. So, <laughs> is it the a sort of surgical operation halfway through the movie? I should know about it. <laughs> anyway, when I looked at my horrible face, I mean his horrible face, uh, Palpatine, as we later knew to call him, 
Uh, I thought, well, I think he needs to sound different. He needs to sound a bit deeper. And let's face it, he looks like a black, slimy toad. <laughs> so uh, I, I started to think, well, what does a black, slimy toad sound like? And I took <coughs> this sort of started, you know, <coughs> in me. And I thought, well, what if it would be possible to speak on that kind of level? And I knew that some great Japanese actors, theatre actors, could do that. So I sort of worked at it. Because I thought that voice might, might fit that face. And so when we did the scenes, I did it in that voice. And nobody said anything. So I thought, oh, I'd probably like it. Um, but I didn't know that the whole film, of course, was going to be revoiced because of the technology. Because they couldn't capture what they now can. So you did ADR at that time? Yeah. Did and you? then I didn't really know, I suppose, I was going to get that voice until um, I went along to the dubbing studio, the ADR studio, and there was George, of course, and Steven Spielberg, and a colleague of his, and I did a little bit, and Steven Spielberg said, Oh my God, you're so evil! <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought, oh, I'm going to get to keep the voice. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Well, and, and now, do you do any voice work at all? Uh, no, no, not really. And so, you know, now back then, I remember watching an interview with Mark Hamill uh, yeah. talking about, you know, the nine films that this could be and, and the, the prequels and telling the whole story. Were you told anything back when you did that that there would be more? You're joking. I mean, <laughs> nobody, nobody knows anything. No, I didn't, I didn't think George even had a, a, an intention beyond those first three movies, which it always seemed really as one story. And there was sort of rumours and talk, not from him, of, of sequels as opposed to prequels. But then he realised that Vader was such a fascinating character to, let's face it, the whole universe, the whole world, that perhaps how he came into being would be a story worth telling. And so that's what happened. And because um, I got that part, and I should explain to you that somebody else had already been cast, all these, if, if you didn't know, all the years ago in uh, what I did in Return of the Jedi. And that they cast a very old and very distinguished English actor along with us. But he couldn't take the contact lenses tests. He couldn't wear those yellow eyes. Um, so that's when they decided they had to get somebody else. But my great good fortune was I, I was in my late 30s then. So when the story went backwards, I was exactly the right age as it turned out. <laughs> So another one of those interviews happened, uh, and I hadn't really seen him since the last day, and since I got thrown down that shoot, and that was the last day of shooting for me. <laughs> shoot, shoot, yeah, and that took a while to do. Um, but there he was in a hotel room uh, where I was reintroduced to him, wearing the same shirt, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair, he has, he has at least three years. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, um, and he said, you know, what would you like? I said, oh, let's have some water, thank you. Sat down, waited for everyone who wanted me to read or talk. And he said, um, I won't do his voice, but you can do it better than me. Um, I wouldn't dare. But he, <laughs> <laughs> he said, do you, do, you, do you know anybody who wants to play an emperor? And I said, well, funny you should say that. I said, okay, you can give back the water. And that was the interview, really. <laughs> and then he told me a little, not much but a little about the story of the Phantom Menace. But I didn't know that I was, in effect, two people or one person divided into two. Um, he kept talking about these two characters. And I said, God, the other part sounds much more interesting than the senator, the other part being Darth Sidious, and yeah. um, you know the rest. So was there a script then that you received? Or there, did it happen? There were not at that stage at all. Okay. And it was very much scripts were very much under lock and key. Yeah. And uh, you'll all know this, Return of the Jedi had various titles and various coloured pages would come to us day by day. Uh, and we were usually told, relatively late on, the ones to learn. And uh, I remember one rehearsal when we all came in very prepared. And, uh, Richard was directing the scene, it seemed to be going okay. And uh, then George said, no, cut, cut. Uh, that's not, that's, that's not the words. And we all went, well, I think, I think we are. 
Once a beautiful woman said the eyes, no, you're doing pink. I need blue. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have had the blue sheets and we love the pink sheets. But they were done. I hate when that happens. Um, so, you know, here at Star, Star Wars Celebration 6, the uh, main stage, we like to do a little something where we take a, a, a look at the scene, and, and we all know it from our perspective, but we want to kind of get your take on it. So, uh, this is a little something we call... It's a Star Wars Celebration 6 double take. Goodness gracious me. So, not only would we show a scene in this and just kind of have you kind of break that down, but the Emperor is just such a big character in Palpatine, so I'm just wondering about the dynamics between those characters, but also in shooting back when you did Jedi, and then when you did the newer films. What was, what was it like? Was there a large difference in technology and just also that, the sets and the acting from the, between those? Yes, it was a completely different world because um, the first, the first prequel, uh, Phantom Menace, was shot at Leavesden Studios, which subsequently became the home of Harry Potter and many other big distinguished films. But as we were doing the movie, they were building not just the sets, but the studio. So, so it was a little noisy. And uh, sometimes halfway through the scene, you know, a scaffolding pole would come crashing to the ground. <laughs> and we, you know, Natalie and I were doing the scene, and so we sort of stopped because we thought, well, you know. It's a little distracting and it's probably not very good for the overall effect. And the assistant director said, whatever you do, don't stop. Um, so we kept on through what seemed like a war zone sometimes. Um, this is a great photo, by the way. It's like you're both posing, like you've been yes. stopped. Can we just get a quick picture, Emperor? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, there was, there was so many. On that first day, I don't, there were thousands, because these guys were not painted in. There was no painted in. And there were little jeeps that went up and down to 